and today I'm excited to share with you my experience with this full PC build coming from ASU known as the Pro Art. Before I begin, I'd like to thank ASU Singapore to have provided this whole unit for me to share with you guys. Now, what you see here, in fact, is the monitor coming from Pro Art known as the PA279 CRV. Now, my feel of this monitor itself is very vibrant. The colors are very vibrant. The uh, tone and everything it suits my taste. And best part of all, its pitch sharpness is really very, very accurate as compared to my monitor that I'm using right now. Now, next will be the uh, chassis over here, the case. This is known as the PA602. In fact, it's a full tower case, which has tons of features. And besides this, right, there are all the components that is inside this case are all pro art. Starting off with the motherboard, which is a X670E using a 7900X3D processor. And the uh, graphic card is 4070 and inclusive of the PSU. But the PSU is actually not from pro art. It's prime go 850 watt. Now, of all these components, right, we do know that ASU pro art in fact, a top-notch product whereby it does perform. But what really, really, really enticed me most is this case. And I'll talk about this case right now. Starting off with the PC chassis, this is known as the Pro Art PA602 full tower case. And it weighs at 15.8 kg. The structure and build quality of this case is rock solid and the choice of material they have used right, are very good. Be it the front grille, which is plastic, the top section, which I will show you later, the side section on both sides, and the bottom skirt that covers the feet. Same goes to here. These are all quality plastic. And something which ASU have actually done, kudos to you guys. Now, this case, in fact, weighed more than 15.8 kg. If you were to place all the uh, components in, like your radiator, your motherboard, and such, and etc. So it's going to weigh more than 15 kg, as mentioned. And they have thought about this. If you're going to carry this case, right, it's going to be very heavy. So what they have done is this two metal bar at the top. Okay, this gap in fact is of a function whereby you can fit your hands in see same goes to this side so in the event if you want to carry the case right see you can just carry it this way i mean of course you're holding it at the center i'm just illustrating to you so this make it very functionable now coming to the design of the case itself starting off from the front you have a beautiful grill mesh front cover whereby the gap of the grill right in fact the uh, width is 15.5 each so there'll be tons of air going through it and you don't have to worry about having dust going into your case because there's a mesh filter or dust filter which i'll show you later that will capture all the dust and speaking about the dust right <laughs> Now, there is something very neat about this case itself whereby you will not see this in other case. If you will see here, right, which I will show you later, now, this function here right, is in fact a sensor whereby you can activate it through this button over here, this button. When it's on, right, it will monitor how much dust your mesh filter or dust filter is collecting. And it, if it's go to a certain, certain limit, right, whereby is choked with dust, right? The indicator over here, there's an LED over here, will tell you that, oh, it's time for you to wash your mesh filter or dust filter. A very neat function, pretty good. Now, coming to the design of this case, where I mentioned that this cutout, right, is of a purpose whereby it allows you to grip the uh, metal bar at the top. Then at this section, this is the whole tempered glass. And on the tempered glass itself, something unique, though it's not a very big uh, mesh over here, but it acts as a function whereby it will draw cool air into your case itself, or should I say allowing cool air into your case. And this mesh holes over here right, at the back 
there is a dust filter which you can remove and to wash. Now, another brilliant thing that what ASU have done, right? In all cases that I've actually encountered with the case feed, whereby you'll see that two prominent studs protruding out and you'll have a hole over here. So to close the ugliness, right? They have done a bottom skirt with all these grill, grills over here. Same goes to the other side. See? And you might be thinking that, hey, by having this right, does it have a gap? Of course, see? This is the gap. And later on, I'll be showing you what these two wheels are for. Another brilliant idea from ASU. Greatly appreciated it. So having this to close up, right? You can see that it's very elegant. It's like you won't see two feet sticking out. And there's one big hole over here, which is nice. Now looking at the uh, other side, you'll be provided with a full metal cover, which cover up all, all your cable mesh or cable management area, which is nice. Now coming to the rear, if you to notice at the top, there's this rubber grommet, a circular rubber, rubber grommet. Now this is for a purpose, which I will show you later. In fact, you can hide the uh, default ASU antenna in this case itself by routing the uh, antenna, right, the cables over here and to place the whole antenna into this case, which I will show you later. Now, moving to the top left, this is whereby the I.O. cutout for your motherboard rear I.O. to fit and you'll be provided with total of 8 expansion slot. At the bottom over here, this is a cutout where you fit your PSU now, the whole section at the rear right is being designed in a way that you have all this ventilated circular holes, okay, be it the side, the uh, rear fan area in, of this section, inclusive of the uh, PCIe brackets. This is meant for more hot air exhausting out from the case. Now, on my top right, this is whereby you mount the rear fan. It can cater for 140 mm or 120 mm. And this hose over here right, is meant for 120 mm. And this is meant for 140 mm. Now, this enclosure over here, in fact, is of some function, which I will show you what this is for. Another brilliant idea too. Now, to remove both sides of the uh, panel, be it the tempered glass or the back panel over here, what is needed is just to press this two button, which is located over here. So when you press it down, right, see, this will re just remove the uh, back cover. Same goes to your tempered glass. Now, having to say this, right, though this is a neat mechanism, but I wouldn't advise you to release the uh, panels like this as in like not supporting it. Though these two panels right are holding on to the uh, chassis itself. Sometimes you might not know, accident might happen. So I would advise that in order to take out, especially the tempered glass area, before you release the uh, tempered glass right, hold on both ends, press the button, holding and support the tempered glass, remove it out. Now to place this back, this tempered glass back, to the uh, panel itself, I mean the case itself, right? There are two guiding notch over here. Align these two to the bottom. So let me just show you. So once you align, right, you can just plug in place. It's plug and play. Now, earlier on, I mentioned about this mesh over here, which at the other end, right? See? You can just Take this off and take out the uh, dust filter and to wash it and to clean it. Once done, right, when it's dry, you can place it back on and to clip it back. A very nice touch. Now, this, once you have taken out the uh, temper glass, right, it will expose the interior, which is very spacious. On the other end, when you remove off the uh, back cover right it will expose all the cable management and such 
And you can see that all these are nicely laid out. And as for the front, this grill. Now, there are two buttons at each side, which is here and here. All is needed is just to press the button. See, as I press right, this is already released. So on both sides, press it and this will come off. And your whole front cover, you can just remove off. Just pull it out. And how this is being held to the front panel, right? I mean the front chassis, right? Is based on these two holes over here, as you can see. So when you want to place it back, right? Just pluck it and to put it back. Now, as mentioned to you, if you were to engage this sensor here, right, it will detect how much dust is being collected to this dust filter, which is removable. So it will tell you that oh, when the indication of the light stated red, then it's for you to clean off this uh, dust filter. So you can just remove it, then you wash it. Now earlier on I showed you that the uh, front right, it has some pattern on it. So this is how it looks like. See, pro and the ah. Very nice. And once again, once you're done right, you can just place it, place this back. And there's only one directional as you can see over here, right? See? Don't do it this way, it will not fit. You have to do it this way. Then you just place it back. Now besides the front mesh dust filter, there is a bottom dust filter which filter out the dust where your PSU is drawing air from the bottom. So you can just pull this out. See? Easy access. And I really like the idea of what they have done over here because most cases, right, in order for you to remove off the uh, dust filter, you have to do it at the back. But for this, right, you can do it at the front. See? Nicely done. And when you remove off the uh, grill, it will show you with two very massive fans over here. And this are uh, 200 millimeter fans, tons of air going through. In fact, they have built this in a way that it channels all the, all the uh, air right to the case itself by these two fans. And there's a gradual slope at the bottom of the PSU shroud where you will push the air at the bottom up, which is pretty nice. This is the top of the case where you see this top mesh. Now to remove this top mesh, as you can see at the back over here, all this needed is just to lift this up and to pull. And this whole piece will be removed. And of course to place it back, follow this guiding studs over here. Align back to this hole. Then once you have placed it and align it, you can just push it down and to push it in. Now, earlier on I mentioned about this area over here, as you can see, there's a rubber gum over here. Now, what is this for? So what they have done, right, to beautify the whole thing, instead of sticking this to the top, see, it's pretty ugly. So what you can do is to place this cable over here, the Wi-Fi cable, through this rubber garment. See? And of course, this to connect to your motherboard antenna socket. And for this right, you can just push it down and to conceal your antenna. And once this is done right, you can place the cover back on. See, pretty neat. It doesn't show your antenna at all. It's concealed. Well done. Now, besides this, do note that this antenna right is sit on this tray over here, this whole bracket. And in order for you to remove off the top fan bracket or radiator bracket, right, 
you will need to first remove this. See, this is actually the holder for your. This is actually the holder for your antenna. So once this is done, right? In order to remove this tray here, to mount your fans or mount your radiator, there are two screws at the back. So just unscrew them. This one. This two. And you can just leave it up. See? I'm actually leaving it up. So the whole tray, you can take it out and to mount your radiator and such. And to put, place it back, right? There are two guiding notch over here. Just place it to the front, align it properly, and to place it back. And then screw on the tray with the uh, provided screws. Still looking at the top of the chassis where I show you the front I.O. In fact, this is located at the top where you are provided with a power switch, a reset switch, total of five USB port where you have four type A and at the middle type C. At this two port over here is version 3.0. At the bottom two is 2.0. Next will be a compo microphone and headphone socket. And this section over here, in fact, is the fan controller. This case have a built-in fan hub. If you connected all your case fans and your radiator fans to that hub, you can control it through here. And the indication over here is max and auto. So what does that mean? In the event, if you want to ramp up all your fans to max RPM, right, you can just press one button, which is max. It will toggle all the fans that's connected to the hub to ramp at max RPM. And if you want to choose to follow your motherboard PWM fan curve, you can just push this down to auto and you will take the readings from your motherboard. Now, another neat function about this I.O. here, right, is this locking mechanism. As you can see, I can push it down where there is an indication that is red, this is locked, and this is unlocked. What is this, what is this for? Mainly for child proving. If you have kids at home, right, if this is actually located you know, on the floor itself, right, you wouldn't want your kids to actually press the power button. You can just lock it. So when you lock it, right, see, when I press, there are no reaction. If I do unlock it, see, there's a reaction. Nicely done. Before I show you the interior of this case, earlier on I mentioned about these two rollers, which is at the bottom. And what's this for? Well, again, a very nice, nice touch. Imagine that you are, this is actually mounted on your desk itself and where this is the front, okay? And you want to pull out your chassis to feed her with the back rear I.O. So what it can be done, right? You can just tilt this up and with the support of the roller, see, you can roll on your desk. Good function. The interior of this case is extremely spacious, as you can see. It's so wide and so tall. And best part is the depth of the uh, chassis, measuring from the motherboard standoff, or should I say the base over here, to the side tempered glass, right? It's 210, whereby it does state that if you want to place air cooler, right, the uh, measurement is 190 millimeter in height. So imagine that the space over here is 210. I can foresee that you can even exceed 195 max for an air cooler. Now, besides this, right, this case, you can cater a DTX motherboard. That's right, DTX motherboard, full-size motherboard, or a EATX, ATX, MATX, or even a ITX. In the event, if you want to place an DTX and EATX, and you worry that this cover here, which covers the 24-pin cable and all the accessory front I.O. cables, what you can do is unscrew the top thumb screw and the bottom screw of this cover, you can just move out and to tighten them again so that this will give more space for your DTX and EATX motherboard. Now besides this, right, the cable management at the front whereby you have the uh, front I.O., 
your USB and your EPS and such, right? There are two cutouts at the top, two cutouts at the bottom, and one cutout over here at the center, whereby you route the GPU cable to your GPU. Very nicely done. Not only that, it has an additional function whereby it comes with this supporting GPU bracket where you can swivel, see? Depending on the length of the card itself when you place it horizontally. And of course, this is adjustable by this thumb screw. See? So once you have lever it in place, right? The height that you wanted, right? You can just tighten the uh, thumb screw. For graphic card placement, this case is able to cater a full length graphic card at 450 millimeter. Just an illustration, this is my ASUS TUF 4080, whereby it has a length of 355. So if I to sit here, right, see, not an issue, plenty of space. In fact, you can mount it vertically or horizontally. Now for horizontal mount, not an issue, whereby the height, right, will not hit the uh, fan. But if you to mount this vertically, just take note of the height. Now, this case does come with a vertical mounting bracket for you to mount your graphic card vertically. And with that bracket, right, when you mount the graphic card, make sure the height is not at 125 mm above. If it's above, right, you will hit the rear fan. This case does come with pre-installed fan where you have two at the front, one at the rear. Now, for the front fans, you are provided with two times 200 mm fans and at a thickness of 38 mm. Now, these fan blades are pretty massive. In fact, it will draw tons of air at low RPM and with the assistance of the thickness of the uh, fans itself, which is 38. So you can imagine that how much air is being channeled into the case. And of course, with the gradual slope over here, right, it does push the air up. So to cool all your components within the case itself. And as for the rear, which is actually a 140mm fan, this thickness here is 28mm. And you can choose to change this out if you want a 120mm. But I would to prefer you to keep this and the front intact, just to make use of the default fan. Reason being, right, as mentioned to you, the front fans, right, it will be crazy if you won't use it. Because it's, you know, pulling a lot of air at lower RPM, and that will reduce noise. Now, if you choose to place at the front with your own fans, you can only do it with 140mm fans. As you can see here, right, the slot allocation over here, I mean the holes, these are for 140mm fan, and you can place two. And there is a restriction whereby you can't place three because there are no fan holes for you to place three. It's only allocate for two. But at all times, I would prefer you to retain this to 200 mm fans as it draw a lot of air at a low RPM. For radiator placement, I wouldn't advise you to place anything at the front. Reason being right, there are restrictions. Now I do know that these are fixed 140 mm fans holes over here. So you assume that you can place a 280 red. Well, if you were to place a 280 red, when I re you will have to remove all this front Shroud, and this will expose the hard disk cage. And even if you to remove off, off the uh, hard disk cage, right, you still can't cater a radiator. Reason being, right, there is this angle point over here, which blocks your radiator if it's too thick. So try not to place any radiator at the front. Now, as for the actual placement on radiator, I would do it at the top, whereby it's catered for 420, 360, 280, 240. 140 and 120. The bottom PSU shroud is removable and is in two pieces. You will need to unscrew some screws which is located at the bottom front over here, here and here and also at the back which is this. So once you have unscrewed all which these are the screws, kindly do not lose them. Once you have done that, right, first at the front section where you just push it out, see, and you can just take it out. It's quite easy. Next will be this rear end here, 
all is needed again hold on to the uh, straw push it out and you can remove now you might be asking why am I removing all these straws for this case has a very unique way to mount your PSU and I'll show you how as the common method is to mount it this way right you feel it this way but you can't over here right there's a blockage so instead of doing it at the back you do it at the front and there is an advantage of placing a PSU to the front now what I'm having here this is a prime 850 watt gold power, power supply from ASU a very nice pattern where you have white at the bottom black at the top see it's modular so what you need to do is just place the PSU at the front see once you have a line right make sure you screw in the uh, screws to hold the PSU to the case and this is where the magic comes instead of fiddling all the cables at the other side you are fiddling all your modular cables over here you can do nice cable management as in like zip tie all your cables and such and to route to the respective connectors that is needed the uh, power so well done this is very very flexible as compared to the uh, pathetic narrow space at the back right if you were to do your cable ties and such right you will have to push here and there which gives you not enough space or sometimes you have to really you know use force to push your cables in else ASU have done a very good job they let you mount the uh, PSU at the front and to do your cable management over here see there are plenty of space the hard disk cage can be removed too what is needed fit to the back there are a total of four screws over here one two three four I really remove them. Next is to pull out this caddy over here. Okay, you just remove a bit, then swivel to the front. We can see that there are screw points over here. Over here. Now I've already taken two screws. So to take out these screws, right, all you need is a long screw screwdriver. Place it in and to remove. Once you have done all the screws over here and over at this end, which I will be removing, then right now you'll be able to pull it out. See, it's that easy. And the whole hard disk cage is removed. If you are not using the hard disk 3.5 inch, you can just totally remove off both cages and to lighten the weight and this will give you more room and in the event right now this PSU in fact is 160 in length you can place all the way up to 200 not a problem you will have plenty of space if you were to remove off the uh, hard disk cage at the other side this is the cable management area where you have all the cables all the velcro stripes and such starting off with the tie down points there are a total of six which one hidden over here three at the rear and two at the bottom now you're provided with three velcro stripe to tie down all your cables and why did I actually remove off just to show you see they have designed in a way that this is wider this is narrower so you can place those thin cables at the side and to place all these chunk cables right at the wider portion of the chamber and from here you can just velcro stripe it in place let me just illustrate see this is in place neat and tidy same goes to here now besides this besides this there is another chamber over here this is actually a clip on whereby you tidy up whatever is actually on the front all your front IO cables your fan cables and such you can tuck this nicely and to close this see this will lock in place so this won't be messy and speaking of which right at the top over here this is the fan hub whereby the front two 
200 mm fans, right? It's connected over here. The rear fan is connected over here, and you will be given three pots. And these three pots is being filled up because I mount a 420 liquid AIO at the top, which I'm going to show you later. Now, for the storage space of this case itself, is pretty unique. You have tons of storage space whereby you can hold 3.5 inch hard disk, total of four. Okay, let me just remove this. As you know, there are three at the bottom, which is one, two, and three. Next will be this. You can place a 3.5 inch over here, but before you do so, make sure you remove off this and to take out the caddy. And why do you have to take this out? So when you mount your 3.5 inch at the top right, you have to turn over and to mount the screws to hold the hard disk on the caddy. Once it's done right, then place it back and to screw these thumb screws in place. And this is how it's been done. So there are a total of four, sorry, there are a total of four 3.5 inch hard disks you can place. And for 2.5 inch SSD, there are a total of eight. Starting from here, you can place one over here. Again, in order for you to place your 2.5 inch SSD, right, you will need to remove off this so that you can plug and to place back the caddy. So this one, there are a total of four over here. Now, as mentioned, you need to remove off this caddy. The thumb screws are over here to remove and to place your SSD. So one, two, three, four, five. And at the bottom, the 3.5 inch hard disk Caddy, right? In fact, you can also place SSD. See at the bottom, the four screws, so you can place your SSD over here and to fasten them with screws at the bottom. And you can sort it in place. Now, plenty of storage. Coming to the bottom where you have this PSU strop area, whereby this is a standard 160 millimeter in length. The specification on the website itself stated that max is 190 if you want to mount the hard disk cage. But if you want to go beyond that as in like you have power supply more than 200 or 210 millimeter, you can. You probably stretch here and you might thinking that not enough space. Well, you have to sacrifice the cage over here. You can remove this off to give more space. Placing back all the PC components back to the original case is as easy as taking it out. As you can see, at the top, I mounted the original Pro Art 420 liquid cooler, and the motherboard is the Pro Art X670E motherboard. And as for the graphics card, it's the 4070 Pro Art. And as you can see, right, the supporting bracket over here is supporting the card with no issues at all. It's pretty sturdy. And let me take you to the top to show you how this liquid cooler is being mounted. As you can see over here, the Pro Art 420 liquid cooler, the radiator is sitting at the top. And this is at a 30 millimeter thickness. So let me just run and let you see. See? And kindly do not make use of Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 or 3, which is 420 variant because the thickness is 38 you will not be able to fit to this tray exactly and you can't close the top panel so take note on this now just to show you on the other side see in fact this thickness of the radiator right is exactly the height of this so when you place the fan at the bottom right you will see that it's concealed see is concealed and it's hidden underneath which is stealth black pretty nifty earlier on i mentioned about this bracket over here it's pretty unique so what is this this is in fact a toolless design whereby you unscrew it and this is actually captive then take a look at this see you remove and in fact this is a toolless design to clip on your graphic card to the PCIe slot. So what is needed is just to push this in, align it properly, place this back, and to screw it on. 
And once you have done this right, your card will stay there. See, it doesn't move. If you have intention to mount your GPU vertically instead of horizontally, first thing to do is to purchase a riser cable. And in this accessory box that comes with the ProArt suite or the case, you can obtain these two brackets. The steps to prepare to mount it vertically, first thing you need to do, of course, you need to remove your GPU. Second, remove off this bracket over here. There are two screws over here. So once this is removed, right, replace it with this bracket, which is this way. So once it's done, right, you will then have clearance, as you can see, if you don't remove the bracket, right, you will have no clearance at all for you to prepare your vertical bracket, which is this way. So make sure that you have replaced the uh, back bracket, remove this, then counting from the bottom, six expansion slot, bracket, take it out. Then place this in at the lower section. Reason being right, if you don't, if you leave this up, Imagine that your height of the graphic card, right, it might hit your rear fan. So make sure that it's at the lower 6 expansion slot, which is mounting this to it, not at the top. So giving more headroom for your card that will not touch the uh, rear fan. I have to be honest with my impression when I received this whole PC build coming from ASU, and it's big, massive. Heavy, everything feels so premium. Be it your monitor, your components that are inside this case, and the case itself, my god, is fantastic. Now, this is actually meant for content creators, or if you are dealing with uh, video editing or 3D rendering, this might suit your build. Based on the fact that for video editors, right, or photographers that you did your photo editing, now this monitor <laughs> really shines. And with all the components that it's making use in this Pro Art case, fantastic. Nothing is lagging and such. But if you are into overclocking, right, this able you to do slight overclocking, but not drastic overclocking. So don't expect that you can go, you know, way out. That's not it. Now, as we know that all Pro Art components coming from ASU, they are of performance. And for me, right, what really, really excite me not only the components, but especially this case. As I show you all the functions, all the features, ASO have dedicated their design on this case itself to bring more airflow to the case, not overspending with all your you know, fans all over. You just have two fans in the front, which is super big, 200 millimeter, to draw all the cool air and to force all the warm air out from the top and to the back. Besides this, the functionality, especially the rollers at the bottom. Well thought, because this thing is so heavy. So when you want to pull this out from your chest, I mean, from your desk, right? Instead of carrying it, you can just depend on the roller and to roll it out. Nice touch. Another thing is that for those people who are actually lazy on cleaning your dust filter and such, right? You might think that, oh, it's not dusty and such. There is a sensor over here. As you can see, right, if I hold on it, see there's a blink on the light. So this is the indicator to tell you that whether is it dirty or not. So you got to clean your dust filter, a good indication. Another thing is child proof. If you were to place this case on the floor itself, you can lock the power switch whereby no accidentally pressing on the power switch. Well done. And besides this, right, you can toggle the switch, the fan switch, as in right now is idle. If I were to toggle it at full, Probably you might hear it or not hear it, but to me, it's total silence. Gonna bring it back to auto. Now, besides this, right, the functionality, like how you remove all the uh, front, the side, the top, and amazingly, the uh, liquid cooler, which I'm using, the 420 Pro Art liquid cooler, it hides the radiator totally, which is hanging at the top. And based on the fact that it's not seated inside, See, that's the thing. If you were to place the radiator inside, right, all the heat that is 
within the uh, motherboard area, right, will hit to your radi radiator too, besides the cool plate. But if you if you were to have the uh, radiator at the you know at the external, right, it's exposing more cool air. So that's one good point. Now, besides this, the toolless design on your GPU itself, you can just mount and dismount without having to unscrew those screws at your PCIe slot, which is good. Well done. Now, cable management was fantastic. The fan hub works perfectly. I have no pro issue toggling from auto to max. So these are the things that really, really makes me appreciate what this case is all about. Now, if you guys are interested to know more info about this case, right, I will leave uh, on my site where you can see all the shops you can make inquiry with them. With this said, I hope you guys have actually enjoyed what I've shared with you. And for those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.